All right, so today is spark plug day. Uh, I'm changing them out on my 2015 cruise. Uh, I'll probably kind of put a bunch of these clips together, but figured I'd just kind of document me changing out my spark plugs. Uh, so the tools, from what I understand, you need a little T30 Torx bit to get the ignition coils off. Uh, obviously just general ratchets and then you have a little spark plug um, it's a 5 8 deep socket but this one's a little spark plug one so it has specific um, holding so it'll hold the spark plug when you pull it out um, but other than that that's basically all you need I have a little shop towels here just for cleaning and then your new spark plugs and uh, I just bought this a little feeler gauge uh, to make sure they're set at the right gap Okay, so the spark plugs I'm using are NGK, you can see the serial number right there, and the, basically the model, the FR7BHXS. Um, these aren't specifically the OEM cruise ones. From what I'm reading online, um, most people recommend them. Uh, I could have bought the OEM ones, but I kind of want to try these because supposedly it helps with the hesitation of the cruise. Um, which I've kind of been having. That was mostly because my ignition coils just went, which is why I'm doing these as well. Um, I got the ignition coils replaced a couple weeks ago. Figured I should do the spark plugs. So the first thing you want to do, um, can't really show this on camera because you kind of need two hands, but they come in little cases like this and you should check the gap between them. So you want to make sure not to break that tip but you want to check the little gap there. Make sure, I believe the cruise manual says about uh, not 0.24 to not 0.28, if I'm correct. So about not 0.28 should be fine. I think my feeler gauge only goes to not 0.25 and then it's not 0.3. Um, but as long as it's kind of below that not 0.3 and above that not 0.25, I think that'll be good. Um, these are pre-gapped as well but should always do a double check, especially for a car, just because it'll make a lot more of a difference. Okay, so this is the feeler gauge. So there's a little tool for the spark plug gap changing and the uh, gauges themselves. So you can see not 0.25, not 0.3. Um, you kind of want it in between these two for the cruise. At least that's what I see recommended in the, well, it's recommended in the uh, owner's manual so they're all above not 0.25 below not 0.3 they kind of lean more towards not 0.25 from what I see so I think they'll all be good and then this is where you widen it you basically just grab onto the uh, you just grab onto the little tip there and widen it um, you don't need to do much because it's a pretty fine amount so just a tiniest bit of pressure will change it a lot um, but basically, we're ready to actually change them out now. Alright, so this is the engine. Uh, basically, the spark plugs are under this little uh, cover here. And you can, it's got little tabs. I've already got mine off. So you just basically pull up with both hands on both sides. Um, just pull up from there, and then you got the ignition coils here. But before we do anything, uh, we should just unhook the battery so we don't have any issues um i don't think it's really an issue but just for safety we'll do that first and we'll uh, continue on with it all right so lighting is bad but you can see the negative terminal is off the battery um, that should be enough just so we don't have power running to the system and now we can use that torx bit uh the t30 i believe to take that off and after you take that off you'll need to take um, this connector off which you've got a little tab here that you pull back and you press down I believe um, This isn't going to be a great guide. I'm not really trying to be a guide just kind of doing it for myself, I guess All right, so screws are out and that tab is pushed back, but we need to get this connector off first So we're gonna do that and I'll come back 
Okay, so that connector was a bit of a pain to get out. Um, obviously, you've got this little tab that you push down on and it, um, it opens up, but that pushing mechanism doesn't open it up much, that little latching tab. So I saw some people recommending you just push it back with a screwdriver. Um, so you like wedge in a screwdriver here and push it back. Um, don't do that because the tab will be here. So you can do it after, but make sure this tab is pushed up with the screwdriver first and make sure it's as open as you can without breaking it. And then you can slow, slowly shimmy it off with the screwdriver. Um, yeah, that's pretty much just that. And now we can pull the ignition coil back and uh, get to our spark plugs. All right, so that's the ignition coil pack out. Um, it was actually pretty easy. Uh, you basically just grab onto it from both ends. So you have your fingers here, you have your hand over here, your right hand over there. And uh, you basically just put constant pressure on it. Um, this was pretty easy because I'm pretty, it's a new one, it should be. Uh, I got it replaced at the dealership a couple weeks ago. Um, so basically, you got the spark plugs in there. So I've heard some people, their ignition coils will break pulling out. Um, just be careful and make sure you're not going to break it. Uh, it might already be broken if you're having misfires, which is what I was having. Um, my ignition coil pack went, and basically what this does is it basically is a transformer. So it steps up your voltage so you can uh, actually jump the gap on the sparks, and that will actually um, put the spark through the system because you have 12 volt battery, that's not enough to produce a spark. Um, so you've got your spark plugs here. I was having a misfire, I don't know what cylinder, they didn't tell me, and I don't have a tool right now with me, but it was basically my ignition coil pack that was gone. So if you're doing it to replace a misfire, um, probably should pick up an ignition coil pack too. I believe these are rated, the spark plugs in the manual say every 96,000 kilometers which I'm about 92, 93, so about right on the dot. And uh, my ignition coil pack went, and I'm doing the spark plugs to save me a bit of money. So we're gonna go onto that now with our spark plug socket and basically pull all of these out, and then we'll put the new ones in. All right, so don't be like me, and uh, don't have a long enough extender. Uh, this is, this is not enough. It's not even on the spark plug. So I'm gonna have to go to the store, grab myself some extensions. I believe they're half, um, half inch. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pack up, just make sure everything's locked so no one tampers with it. But no one's gonna drive it anywhere. Uh, keys are with me and the <laughs> it's, it's not even gonna fire. Um, but we'll just put everything away so hopefully no one steals anything and then I'll come back with extensions. All right, so another tip. Uh, remember your battery is disconnected, so don't try to lock anything in the car. Um, I put it in my house, not gonna show that, but I'm walking to the Canadian Tire. Okay, so I got the extensions there. Uh, I got the impact ones because they're on sale, not much more than the regular. Uh, but now I should have the right length for spark plugs. All right, so that's a much better fit. You can see I can actually get in there and take them out. So I'm gonna take them out. Um, one thing you wanna note, uh, you don't wanna let that be open for too long. You don't wanna let debris in there, uh, cause obviously that's your cylinder. So I have the other spark plugs ready. I'm gonna grab them in a second and we're gonna be ready to change them out. All right, so there's my old spark plug. Uh, it's not horrible, but it's not great either. Um, but now we're gonna install the new ones. Okay, so I've got one done here in the progress of the second, and we've got uh, two more to go. Um, I should mention with spark plugs, um, you wanna make sure you're only threading them in initially, and then you can actually tighten them down. Um, you don't wanna tighten them too tight because then you'll strip it. And if you don't do it by hand, um, you have the chance of stripping it as well, so I didn't have it on there. But um, since I can't fit my fingers in there, um, I'm just using a little bit an extender and just doing it by hand. You want to make sure you're not cross-threading it um, because if you cross-thread it, then you're going to have uh, some pretty big issues. So it's going in smooth there and 
that's about the limit of what I can do by hand. So just because I want to be correct, I'm going to switch to a torque wrench. But uh, if you've done spark plugs plenty before, um, you can just do it like turn and a half or whatever. Um, just enough to put that pressuring down. So you can see here, this is a little, or not here, here there's a little ring here. Um, that's a little, on the new ones, it's kind of a slant. So when you crush it down, it'll become flat, make a seal. Um, I've seen people recommend you like put lubricant in there or something to seal it. Um, you shouldn't need to do that from my experience. Um, never did that on John Deere lawnmowers and you shouldn't ever need to do it with spark plugs as far as I know. Um, I don't know, crazy people I guess. So if I had to make a guess on which one was misfiring, uh, three is looking pretty crusty. Um, I'd guess that's the one that burnt out the ignition coil, if you ask me. Um, but we're putting in the fourth one. Hopefully we should be having smoother rides. All right, all the spark plugs are placed. Uh, I put them in torque. They're pretty much all tight down there. So I'm gonna put my ignition coil pack back on and start her up. Okay, so that's back in. It's plugged back in. Should be all ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna do a check of the oil and put that cover back on, but uh, also connect the battery again and I'll do a little test drive, make sure it seems good. And yeah. All right, so I decided to look at the air filter too. Um, it looks a bit dirty, but I mean, if you look underneath, it's still pretty clean. Um, so it's probably still got some life in it. Um, I don't know, maybe, like I'm almost up on an oil change now, but next oil change, I'll probably do it. Not too bad, should be fine. Um, also, if you have rusty air intake bolts like I do, um, these two are pretty much rust out, so you can't uh, actually put a, it's meant to be a Phillips, not a square. Um, but if you have those, uh, a set of right angle pliers works wonder you can just grab onto them and twist pretty much like a screwdriver and uh, take them out pretty easily and then put them back in pretty easily uh, saves you a couple bucks over just buying them again or fitting in the wrong screws all right so we'll put the windows down and then we'll start it uh, just so we can hear it if anything's wrong so uh this is a neat little trick I like to show. So we'll just have the windows down when we uh, start driving. And we'll do kind of a lap around the block and just make sure it's working correctly. So here's a little tip too if you haven't done it already. Um, the cruise has the engine oil life. Um, you don't really want to go to zero because these engines aren't going to last that long if you do. Uh, mine's at 48% right now. But you have your trip meters, so I have this is what I usually have on display, so I can see my speed, kilometers left, and uh, fuel efficiency. I don't really care about the fuel efficiency, but this is my trip from last uh, fuel, so that's last time I've got fuel. But your second trip, I recommend put that on your oil changes. So you can see I've been 6,000 kilometers since my last oil change, and you can kind of see efficiency for that range. So I've got seven liters per 100 kilometers. Um, that's been a lot of city driving, but uh, you've basically got those two as a quick little tip if you want to, um, if you're doing oil changes yourself. So, and you can always reset it here just by clearing it yourself. So, I just kind of want to start up here um, and see it. So, clutch in, I'll wait for a bit of traffic so I can hear it. Yeah, I kind of like live on a busy road. Uh, might just have to start it. I'll do it here. Neutral, clutch out. That might be me, but it feels a lot smoother. 
I'm not even. It might be placebo. It might be just me. That feels a lot stronger, and it feels a lot more peppy.